Okay, so finally, as promised, a uh, demo of uh, JFlap. So uh, the really nice thing about JFlap is one, it allows you to create um, finite state machines like a DFA. The other thing is that it allows you to test inputs, so to, to see if your answer is correct, basically. So, um, so this the, I we we've posted a, an installation guide on Moodle to install uh, JFlap. Once you install it. Uh, you should you should see uh, this sort of main menu. Um, if you want to create a DFA, just go on finite automata, um, and you'll see the screen here. Okay. Um, so now, if if this this sort of gives you a couple of options, if you want to create some states, um, let's say I, I create three states q0, q1, and q2, um, and then I can sort of move them with the select. Uh, let's say I make them look like this. Um, and then the the other the other thing I need to do is create transitions, right? So um, I click on transition creator, and then I hold on. Uh, so I click and hold on Q0, and I drag to Q2. Okay. So let's say I want it. I want from Q0 to Q1 to Q2. Sorry, I want zero and one to go there. So zero and uh, one. Notice, don't when you when you write this, don't write the zero comma one. Okay, I tried that, and uh, JFLAP doesn't know that you mean both zero and one. You actually have to write them individually. Okay. Um, okay, so here I have a lambda. I don't actually want that. I want a DFA. So I click on my um, delete icon here, and I just delete that lambda. Okay. Um, so now let's create a, a couple more transitions. So let's say from Q2 you want to self loop. You just um, sort of click using the, the transition arrow, you click on Q2 itself. Let's say I want zero to go to itself. And then from Q2 to Q1, I want a one, okay? And then maybe, I don't know, Q1, let's say uh, a one, and then from Q1, go back to zero, uh, like this, okay? So um, uh, let's see, is this a valid DFA? Okay. So I hope that you answered no. And the reason why it's not a valid DFA, the only reason why it's not a valid DFA, is because we don't have an initial state. Remember the five tuple definition? So you're missing a Q0. Q0 uh, meaning the initial state, okay? In this case, it just happens that you have another state called Q0. So to make a state the initial state, right click on it and uh, select initial. Notice that, um, Q0 doesn't mean necessarily that you're the initial state. It's just a name that you sort of give it. Um, if you made this guy an initial state, it would still be a valid DF DFA, okay? Um, it would be a bit more, I mean, maybe it would be a bit compli more complicated to sort of understand, um, but really it can be any, any state can be initial state as long as there is one, okay? So just for the sake of convenience, let's say Q0 is the initial state. Um, so now I have a valid DFA, okay? You're saying, oh, but you're missing uh, final states. Actually, you can have uh, an empty set as the set of final states, okay? What that would just mean is that this uh, DFA here accepts no strings, basically. Wherever you go, you're gonna end up in a uh, non-final non state. So you're gonna reject, okay? Um, but that's not really interesting, right, to test. So let's, let's make it interesting. Let's say right-click on Q2 and select final. So now it's the final state. And now let's, let's test the input. So to test the input, just click on input and then multiple run, okay? So here I already have a couple of runs uh, inserted for me. Um, you can add some more just by sort of hitting enter and then writing a bunch of, a bunch of uh, zero ones, okay? So now if I, if I want to see which ones are accepted, which ones are accepted, which ones aren't, I just say run it, okay? So for example, zero is accepted. Why, if you start at Q0, if you start at Q0, you see a zero, and then you go to Q2, okay? But well, let's see which ones. Zero one is not accepted because you start at Q0, you see a zero, you go to Q2, okay? Then you see a one, you go to Q1. That's not a final state, and you, you finish your input here, uh, you finished on a non-final state, so you uh, reject, okay? Um, another cool feature, if you want to really sort of debug your DFA, is um, 
step by state. So an input where it's step by state. Um, let's say I want to I want to trace my my input um, for let's say zero zero one zero. Okay. So I, I select okay. And then here it, it knows that it's going to start at Q zero, and then you're basically going to trace it, like we did in tutorial. In tutorial two. Okay. So uh, click step to go to the next state. So it, it read a it read a zero and it went from Q0 to Q2. Then it reads a one. So, oh, sorry, it reads a zero again. So it, it's still in Q2. Then it reads a one, so it goes to Q1. And then it reads a, a, a zero and it goes to Q0, okay? And then it's red because it's a, it's a reject. If it was um, green, it would have been an accept, okay? So uh, feel free to use JFLAP in your assignment. You can also, uh, once you've created your, your DFA, you can use file and sort of export it as a JPEG or a PNG. So you can uh, sort of paste it in your assignment. So uh, you're more than welcome to actually use it because it, it helps you to see if your DFA is correct. Um, and you can sort of also use it as a, as a workbench kind of for your DFA. Okay, so um, uh, I hope that was helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.